In the epistle of 1 Timothy, it reads the characteristics requirements of a bishop, that the bishop must be above reproach, uh, a husband of one wife, which is an interesting requirement, uh, temperate, sensible, dignified, hospitable, uh, an apt teacher, which would be important, no drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, and no lover of money. And Titus, the epistle of Titus, that continues on the requirements of a bishop, it says a bishop um, must be blameless, not arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard, which apparently was important in those days, or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable and lover of goodness, a master of himself, upright, holy, and self-contained. Welcome to one of our vlogs from St. Mark's Episcopal in Dalton, Georgia. I'm going to move around here. I'm not in Dalton, Georgia, but down in Atlanta, Georgia, where at the Cathedral of St. Philip, which is the, um, uh, dioc uh, the Cathedral of the Diocese of Atlanta and the home of our Bishop Rob Wright. Now, a cathedral is, comes from the Latin word cathedra, which may, makes really mean seat or throne. It comes that because the cathedral is the seat of a bishop. And also the cathedral is the central church of a diocese where all the major events of a diocese, such as the ordination of a bishop or priest or deacons, uh, would take place. And we're here today for a ceremony like that, but it's not uh, for a bishop, priest, or deacons, but a very special ceremony to uh, honor the licensure of lay people who have served different ministries in the church. This is the first time the Diocese of Atlanta has had this. One of our own, Jack Setters, is, has gone through a lot of effort and time to order to become licensed in, in uh, several ministries. So we're going to, here today to honor Jack and to celebrate here at the cathedral. So we'll move away from some other folks here. Uh, it's kind of a noisy place to be, but uh, on the cathedral, the cathedrals go all the way back to the 300s when Constantine Samuel's called the peace of the church. It means that the church people or Christians would no longer be persecuted. So there would be an opportunity for the bishops to have a seat. Now I know with our bishop, Rod Wright, and plus those bishops who assist him, um, Don Wimberly and Paul Lambert don't get to sit very much. They're always out into the diocese and into the world and very active ministries. But um, that, it basically means the center of that. And this is where we do have like ordinations. But well, today is not an ordination, but a very good ceremony anyway. But uh, speaking of ordinations and tasks, uh, vacations for everybody, it reminds that all of us, not just those who are ordained or licensed, have tasks or have jobs to do given to us by God. And that... Uh, you know, we are uh, you know, very mindful of this, that God's given us things to do to, into the world. And we're especially mindful of this by his Episcopalians that uh, came from baptismal covenant. There's not just a covenant between we and God, but we and all people, we and the fellow people. So we're reminded as Episcopalians that we are, we are pledged as part of the baptismal covenant to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We pledge to seek and serve Christ and all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. And we pledge to strive for justice and peace among all peoples and respect the dignity of every human being. So we as all Christians and Episcopalians need to remember our covenant. As we say in, in the ordination ceremonies, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.